Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and in this video I'm going to have a look at various bits of photography business advice I've been given over the years. And uh, I've collected quite a few of these together because it's turned out that a lot of them are completely wrong. Um, and uh, they're really the best sort of advice I would give my competitors. Um, now, it's there's often a grain of truth in some of these so uh, you know and they are very specific to what you decide to do for your photography business now by photography business i mean anywhere where you're getting paid for doing photography um I, you know, my definition of a professional photographer is someone that gets paid and that pay is the majority of their income um so you know definitions vary but uh, i wouldn't be too worried over it um i start off with a simple one here. Somebody said, uh, said to me, you really need to concentrate on the photos. You need to concentrate on working most of your time on taking great photos. Well, yes, of course you need great photos. But, uh, and who needs marketing for your business? Oh yes, of course, it's a business. Um, now, as a photographer, um, doing it as a hobby, um, then taking great photos, showing them, doing whatever, that's, that's an important aspect of it. But the one key element I've discovered since uh, becoming a professional photographer nearly 20 years ago is that it is about marketing. You can take the greatest photos going, but if nobody ever sees them, or more to the point, you don't get them in front of the people who, when they see them, decide that they want to pay you for taking more photos. If you don't do that, you get nowhere. So, yeah, concentrate on the photos is a great thing if photography is your hobby. Um, yeah, go for it. Take lots of photos. Put lots of effort into taking the photos. But if you actually want to do it as a job, it's about the marketing and the business aspects of it. it goes for print sales, for example. Now, I've, I've covered lots of videos on covering aspects of prints, but just the other day, somebody asked me about which was better, one printer or the other, for their business uh, because of costs of uh, you know, the printers or things like that. Not a single mention of what their target market was, how they needed to sell things, about the pricing, about their control of costs, all of that sort of stuff. Now, I've covered quite a lot of stuff on print sales, so I won't go into it here. But suffice to say, concentrating on just the performance of a printer when you're thinking of selling prints is like saying, well, I'm going to be a professional photographer. The first thing I need to do is decide exactly what brand of camera I'm going to use. Well, yeah, sure, it's an important thing, but it's a tool like anything else. Um, now, I use Canon f cameras for my work, partly because of the tilt shift lenses, but I could equally well use Nikon. And next week, um, I've got a Hasselblad uh, 100 megapixel medium format camera coming here to do some testing with. Now, that's interesting, but I suspect I'm not going to be able to come up with convincing reasons for my business to spend £40,000 on camera kit. Uh, fun as it undoubtedly will be to use, I'm, I'm not entirely certain that's going to be the way I'm looking at it. Um, medium format gear, interesting. We'll see what it comes up with. I'm hoping some great photos from it, obviously, but we'll see. But you know, that is saying, great, if I get a great camera, I'll take great photos. Now, I'm hoping almost anyone appreciates that's nonsense. It's what you do with it that counts. Uh, likewise, um, I've heard some people recently, and th this occurs every few years, I've heard people say, um, why don't you use film? Where do I start? Film is nowhere near as easy to obtain as it once was. It's expensive to work with. It has all kinds of technical issues if you have to do any number of pictures. There are all kinds of issues that for me, as a working photographer, mean that there is not a hope on earth that I'm ever going to take up film photography again commercially. Now, film photography, if you've never tried it, 
can be a really interesting learning experience. It can be immensely frustrating and you'll come back to digital appreciating why a lot of photographers who used film, when we switched over to digital, we went, oh, this is nice. Now, that's how you go. There's a difference between picking film once again for something because it's fun to do or because it's good for your business. And assuming that there are people out there who will pay you money and that you can find these people, who will pay you money for using film, um, I'm going to say there are not many solid business cases built on using film. And photographers that do it, you'll notice they make an awful lot of noise about the fact they use film. They need to. Uh, they need to generate the publicity, the marketing, that will appeal to that tiny, tiny number of people who go, yes, we want these photos shooting on film. It can be all kinds of reasons, mostly spurious, uh, that people will come up for it. I learned my basic photography on film. I enjoyed it. I'm really glad I use digital now. So once again, difference between personal use and business use of something. Uh, likewise, I've heard people say, ah, you need to tell clients what your personal vision is. Most clients I've met really couldn't care less about what my personal vision is about my photography. Now, I have all kinds of things, aspects of my photography. I'm you know, predominantly an architectural industrial photographer. Um, I, you know, I try and represent space and how people interact with it in different ways. I try and make interesting photos. But I always remember that when I'm working for someone, I'm taking photos for a specific purpose. Now, if I can make them great photos, then that's good. Of course, they need to be great photos more than just, I think they're great photos. I want the client to think they're great photos. So yeah, my personal vision, artist statements, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, it has a place in some areas of marketing, but uh, it really is just something that's marketing uh, and nothing much more. Talking of marketing, why not give stuff away? Um, I've heard uh, people say that uh, judicious use of free work can bring in other work. Yeah, sure it can. Um, I have two prices for, for my work, full price or free. But you can bet that if you are getting something for free from me, then I have another interest in it. Um, yeah, I don't mind admitting, uh, these videos, I enjoy doing them. They help me explore my photography. They earn me some money. They get me exposure in places and that can help. Um, oh, and please do subscribe if you find them useful because that's the sort of thing that helps as well. Yeah, it's part of the business. Now, it happens to be a, a part of the business I enjoy and it's been great to do, particularly whilst the pandemic has seriously limited what I call our real work. However, um, you need to put these things in context as what they mean to you and what the usefulness they are to your business. So, you know, free is one of those things. Somebody said, you know, said to me, you know, the, the classic thing, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Well, I've always believed that there is such a thing as a free lunch. It needs to be a good lunch and there needs to be something else I'm getting for it that I, I'm interested in. Yeah, I, you know, there is a free lunch. It's just a, how you consider it as to how you think about it that makes the difference for it. Free work, yes, uh, everybody remembers when you did some work for free for them. Yeah, they're going to welcome the fact. They're going to come back to you and say, yes, uh, you, that photography you did for us and for free, uh, we'd like you to do some more. Yeah, and by the way, we're now happy to pay you a full commercial rate for it because having it for free made no influence whatsoever on us getting it done. No. Um, if you do stuff for free or on the cheap, then when you go back to what you would consider your normal prices, the people you did it for are almost always going to see it as a massive price hike, not a return to normal prices. You cannot continually discount your work. Trying to discount the stuff on price, I've seen it suggested that you, you really ought to look at your competitors' prices and undercut them. Well. Yeah, it may well work in the short term, but the problem is that when people pick you on price, they drop you on price. 
Competing on price gets you nowhere in terms of developing an ongoing relationship with clients. Uh, and obviously an ongoing relationship of some sort is really useful uh, because that means you're in their head for when they next think of photography, who are they going to go to? Someone they remember. And that's what makes a difference. Um, you, know, you need to be remembered by clients. So that means not just thinking, well, they were really happy with the last bit of work we did. Oh, yeah. By the way, how do you know? Did you ask them? Um, they're really happy, so they'll come back to us next time. No, people don't think about that. The people you're dealing with when you're doing photography work, the photography is but a tiny bit of their job. Uh, they may remember you. They're just as likely to forget you. Now, that's not a personal thing. They've got other stuff to do. Why should they remember just the person who did the photography for them, even if that photography is really great? No, you have to be active about it. You have to get back to people. You have to be out there. You have to be talking to people. Talking about sort of, as I say, being out there and getting, uh, getting noticed, picture credits. Do your pictures for people, but make sure you get your name mentioned. Well, yes, um, I want to be paid for a picture and get picture credits. Picture credits to me are a right. They are not something tacked on just to be nice to me. Um, I want the picture credits to work. Now, almost no one ever reads picture credits. Um, so, you know, if, if somebody says, oh yes, we'll credit your pictures. No, what that means is um, we're not going to pay you, but we'll do something trivial and meaningless just to go with it because you'll think it's, you'll, it's worthwhile. No, it's not worthwhile. Um, and I, I think anyone who's been in photography for any length of time will realise that credits are there for copyright reasons, controlling your assets, controlling distribution of your work, and every once in a blue moon, somebody seeing a picture of yours, liking it, seeing your name and contacting you. It's happened precious few times in the years I've been a photographer. It has happened and it astounds me and it, I'm really happy if it happens, but it's certainly not something, an active part of marketing. So yeah, consider that how you're actually going to sort of get your business out there. Um, you know, talking of the business, um, the idea is um, that um, photographers are guilty of this, is thinking somehow their photography is the difficult bit, that their photography, their creative bit is the really important bit. No, the difficult bit is the business. Um, unfortunately for most photographers, I can tell you that there are lots of good photographers out there, many of them who are as good, if not better than you. However they do it as a hobby, they're very bad at marketing, or whatever. If you can do competent pictures and excellent marketing, you'll do well. If you can do astoundingly good pictures and not market them, then you're not a professional photographer. It's about the marketing. So it comes in, yeah, those, those credits I mentioned, yeah, they're useful, but you know, it's, it's really about the business side of things. Now, I've done lots of these videos looking at different aspects of the business of photography. Have a look at the playlist that covers it. I've got articles on the North Light Images website as well. Feel free to ask questions on the comments on the video. Um, it's, it's very helpful. I enjoy answering them. And uh, thank you too occasionally for people who actually give me ideas for new videos by asking interesting questions. So hope this has been of some interest and uh, thank you.